Hi everyone, welcome to STEM Zebra. My name is Tejas Rakshay. This is a problem solving session for angles, triangles, and trigonometry. I have prepared a set of practice problems for you. They are right here. We are going to talk about it uh, for the next however long it takes to solve them. Um, uh, so so the, the practice problems are here and there is a PDF copy of all these problems uh, as well as I'll make another copy of the solutions and I'll put it, up, uh, put it all up on our website www.stemzebra.org. If you go there, there'll be a link for high school physics. This is a part of our high school physics course. So whatever you're learning for trigonometry, for vectors, it's all going to be keeping in mind physics applications. So you, you go to the high school physics tab and you'll find a uh, table there and uh, with various topics listed. There should be a trigonometry row and then find the problem solving column and there you'll find a, a link to this, uh, this PDF as well as the solutions PDF. And I'll also post a link to this videos and other videos. In that table so do visit our website okay i hope you watched my uh, previous uh, trigonometry theory video if not i encourage you to do so and before that we did a no math introduction of trigonometry hopefully you can watch that too and you'll find that useful as well okay so i'm ready to solve some problems so let's get into it i'm going to erase this here and i'll show you the problems. So the problems are are here. Again, like I said, there is a PDF copy of these on our website. So please do go and take a look at it. Um, I'll show them to you here and then I will also solve them. Okay, so let's get started. The first problem or set of problems actually there's one and uh, there, there are four um, sub problems in it, so to speak, right? There's this collection of four problems of the same type. So it says, convert 75 degree, first one, convert 75 degree to radian, 165 degree to radian, pi over seven to degree. Do you remember what I said earlier in my previous uh, talk that if you have a little a circle here, that's a degree, and in this case, clearly it's a degree and you're being asked to convert it to radian. Over here, it's, it's not there, the circle is not there. So that is already in radian, you have to convert it to degree, three pi by four, convert it to degree. So first step, you read the problem. You read the whole thing. So you read the whole thing. And then you think, okay, what do I need to solve this? What knowledge do I need? I need to know how to convert degree to radian and radian to degree. So let's do a quick review of that. All this is in, a, in my previous video in detail. You can look at it if you want, but here's a quick one. So degree to radian, right? I'm just gonna write shorthand, is you have to multiply by pi divided by 180 degree. That'll get you there. How about from radian to degree? You have to multiply by the inverse of this, which is 180 divided by pi. So let's use this technique in um, in our actual problem and try to solve it. So we are going to solve uh, these problems here, right? I'll I'll do the full solution, but I highly encourage you to uh, do it yourself. You know, get a paper, pencil, pen calculator if you need to solve it yourself because just watching the video you think you understand
you, you think you understood and you understood to some extent, but when you do it yourself, you will really internalize a lot of it and you'll be able to do a lot more difficult problems on your own, right? That is a true understanding, being able to do something yourself, uh, not just watching someone else, okay? So, all right, so let's do it here. I'll post all this, uh, the solution on the website. All right, so what was our first uh, problem? Convert 75 degree to radian, uh, then after that 65 degree, and then um, uh, pi over seven to degree, and three pi over four to degree. Okay, so I'll do it here. Okay, what does it take to convert degree to radian? You have to multiply by pi divided by 180. So 75 degree uh, is, is equivalent to 75 degree times pi divided by 180 degree. So you see this degree and this degree can get uh, you know, you, you have a degree in the numerator and the degree and a degree in the denominator, and that's how you change the units from degree to radian. Uh, okay, so if you wanted to at this point, you can get your calculator out, but I think there's a better way of doing it, which is um, let's see, can what can you divide by, by 75 and 180 both? So just looking at it uh, by 15, right? So you'll be able to divide 75 by 15. Um, so you get uh, five, right? Five pi divided by 12. So that's your answer in radian. Five pi, five times 12 pi radian. If you wanted to, you could use a calculator to put it in a decimal format, but uh, this is uh, th this is a complete answer. Okay. All right. So the next one. Um, convert 165 degree to radian. So use exactly the same technique. Okay, we, we take 165 degree and multiply it by pi divided by 180. You'll notice that even in this case, they're both uh, 165 and 180, they're both divisible by 15. Okay, so um, what will it look like? Hundred sixty five divided by six be divided by fifteen is eleven. And hundred and eighty divided by uh, fifteen, you already did that up here, twelve. Pi. So that's the answer. There you go. Okay, so that's our answer. What about the next one? It says convert pi divided by seven to degree. So here you have to use the other formula we talked about. Okay, meanwhile, I, I flipped the pad here. Okay, so pi divided by uh, seven to degree. 
Um, so let's see, five divided by seven, uh, it's the same as five divided by seven multiplied by, what you remember, 180 degree divided by five. So these two pi up here and pi up here, you can cancel those, right? This and that. So what are you left with? Hundred and eighty degree divided by seven. Now here, if you wanted to, you could you could use a calculator and um, uh, find the a more precise answer than that in the decimal format. Um, well, I personally don't use a calculator. You can just use a uh, you know a, a smartphone if you have one. Most of them have a scientific uh, uh, scientific uh, calculator uh, format. So. This is 180 divided by seven, 180 divided by seven, which is 25.7, okay? Okay, how about the next one? Three pi divided by four to degree. So pretty much the same concept here, right? Uh, I think I'm gonna flip my pad here. Maybe I think that's better. Okay, so use the exact same idea to convert it to degree. Uh, you need to multiply it by 180 degree divided by pi. So you'll notice it uh, has the same property that you saw pi here and pi here. So let's cancel those, right? Numerator and denominator. And what you're left with is three divided by four times 180 degree. So this is something if you wanted to, you could use a calculator or you just could do it in your head, right? That is 135 degree. Uh, you'll notice that up here, I, I wrote degree, uh, explicitly and then drew a box around it here i did not uh, so, sorry i wrote a radian and then drew a box around it here i did not write degree i just put a degree sign okay so with, if you sign the, the the degree little circle is here so you don't need to say uh again that it is degree uh, you notice that i always put a box around the final answer Please do it, and I'll remind you throughout this course, whenever I do these problem solving uh, videos, I'll remind you to do that because it makes it easy for your teacher, whoever is grading you, to find where your answer is. Okay, so try to write it neatly and uh, you know clearly show what your answer is. Otherwise, a lot of times I've seen students you know write a bunch of stuff and then while grading, you wonder where the answer is. Like you had to, it's like, you know, Waldo, you had to find where the answer is. This makes it easier to find. All right, so this is the, the first, uh, first problem. So I'm gonna put it away. Let's go to the next one. Okay, the next one is, uh, uh, pardon. A little bit. Okay, there you go. The next one is uh, which of the following sets of angles can form a triangle? All right, what do you have here? Okay, the three of them A, B, and C. Um, so there are three angles here, right? 120, 100, uh, sorry, 120, 10, and 50. And then there are pi over 4, uh, pi over 6, pi over 2, and then something else down here. So what is the property we're going to use? Do you remember? What's the property? 
uh, if you don't remember, I'll quickly remind you. Here, for a triangle, any triangle, doesn't matter what size, shape, type, the, the three angles add up to 180 degree. Okay, that is a that is a property of triangle. What else? Uh, sorry, not what else. What else can you call 180 degree? Right, it's equivalent to uh, pi radian, right? Pi radian. So depending on whether you're dealing with degree or radian, you know, it's either 180 degree or, or pi radian. They're the same thing. Okay, so let's use that property here for these. What, so what do we have to do? Can can these form a triangle? You have to add them up and see if they are adding up to 180 degree or pi, and that that way you can tell whether they are um, they can form a triangle or not. So okay, let's do that. So I'm not going to write the whole text here. Okay, you can you can look at it in the in the PDF. So this whole text. Instead, I'll just write the problem. 120 degree, 10 degree, 50 degree. How do we check? Let's add them up. So you do 120 degree plus 10 degree plus 50 degree. What is it? Uh, 120 plus 10 is 130, 130 plus 50 is 180. If you don't trust me, use a calculator and try it yourself, but this is what it says. So they add up to 180 degree. So what does that mean? It means yes, they can form a triangle. Okay, how about the next one? Pi over four, pi over six, pi over two. Pi over four, pi over six, pi over two. So there's no degree here, so it's radian, okay? So they need to be, uh, uh, to be uh, adding up to pi for it to form a triangle. Well, let's see. Pi over 4 plus pi over 6 plus pi over 2. Now you got to be thinking, oh, do you remember how to add these things? Right? They have different denominators, you remember. So what do you think? Let's, uh, uh, let's, let's make the denominator something that is a multiple of uh, all of these. So just looking at this, I think 12 will work because 4... 12 is a multiple of 4, 12 is a multiple of 6, 12 is a multiple of 2. So you need to make the denominator the same. Right? So let's do that. So, uh, so 3 times pi divided by, so yeah, divided by 4 times 3, that's this one, plus 2 times pi divided by um, 6 6 times 2, uh, I, sh I should really write 2 times 6 to make, make it easier to see, so I'll do it. I'll do that here. Okay, this way, this should have been 3 times 4 to make it easier to see. Um, and then 6 pi divided by 6 times 2. So the, the denominator is 12, right, in all of these. So that's equal to 3 pi divided by 12 plus 2 pi divided by 12 plus 6 pi 
divided by 12. Okay, now you can add the numerators because the denominator is all 12. All right, so 3 plus 2 equals what? 5. Plus 6 equals what? 11. So it's 11 pi divided by 2. This is not equal to pi. Okay, to, to become pi, this should have been like something like 12 over 12, but it's not. So it's not pi. So then you can say uh, something like they do not form a triangle or cannot, can't form, or can't form a triangle, form a triangle. Next one, 60 degree, pi over four, 75 degree. Ooh, here you have a mix, okay, mix. So let's see how you can deal with the mix. You should be able to deal with it because you have already done in your problem one, uh, you have dealt with this conversion. So 60 degree, pi over four in radian and 75 degree. So the only thing you need to now do is convert uh, pi over four to degree, right? This, this is this is the odd one, right? These it's better to convert one to degree than these two to pi. So let's do that like a side calculation. So pi over four is equivalent to pi over four. To remember how to convert it to degree? 180 divided by pi. Multiply by 180 divided by pi, and then of course pi pi this is 180 divided by 4 which is 45 degree okay so that's uh, that is one result you can use okay so then this becomes this pi over 4 becomes 45 degree so let's add those up then 60 degree plus 45 degree plus 75 degree is what 60 60 plus 45 is 105 105 plus 75 is 180 okay again if you don't trust me use a calculator verify it yourself you should do all of these yourself anyway by the way okay you need to practice yourself to be able to do it so so yes they can definitely form a triangle Okay, everybody understood that? Let's move to the next one. Okay, the next set of questions are here. Um, so find the lengths and angles with the question marks. So uh, all these are right angle triangles, there are three of them. And some of these are not given, whether it's these uh, the, these sides or these angles are not known. So you need to find them. Okay, so what do you have here? First one, A. There's a right angle triangle. The hypotenuse is 7 centimeter. The, uh, this side is 2 centimeter. This is unknown. And um, this angle is unknown as well. So this one so that's what you need to find okay so what would you do this is the right angle triangle so how would you deal with it now you remember you we learned some principles of uh, right angle triangles and let's list them first okay you can watch my previous lesson if you wanted to uh, or let me list them here okay all right one is so this is the right angle triangle. And uh, let's say this angle is um, alpha. Uh, this angle is beta. Okay. And let's call these sides A, B, and C. 
what does the Pythagorean theorem says? say? Uh, it says uh, c square equals a square plus b square. And the hypotenuse square equals this side square and uh, plus that side square. What do you know about angles alpha and beta? Uh, remember, all three angles added together should make 180 degree. So th this is 90 degree. That means alpha plus beta together should be 90 degrees as well. So alpha plus beta should be equal to 90 degree. Then to that, you add this 90 degree, that should make 180 degree. That is the property of all triangles. And then you learned about these trigonometric ratios. Uh, I think there was some acronym like this, right? Um, so, uh, oh, right, something like that. And what was that? So let's say alpha. You want to find these uh, trigonometric ratios for this angle alpha. You write sine alpha equals sine alpha equals opposite divided by hypotenuse. So opposite divided by hypotenuse, which is what is the opposite here, opposite of alpha? It's this B. So B divided by hypotenuse is C. Cosine of alpha equals uh, adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And for alpha, adjacent is this A divided by hypotenuse is C. So A divided by C. Okay. And tan of alpha is opposite divided by adjacent. So for alpha, uh, tan is B divided by A. So that's B divided by A. Tan alpha also equals sine alpha divided by cosine alpha. Plus, you learned one more thing, which I don't think we need to use uh, today, but the Pythagorean theorem also translates into sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha equals 1. And remember, sine square alpha means sine alpha, this whole thing square, plus cosine alpha, this whole thing square equals 1. These two are the same things. Okay, these are the things you learned, so let's apply them uh, to solve uh, this set of problems. Okay, you can use them here. I'll just draw this triangle again, uh, just a hand drawing for reference. This is two centimeter, this is seven centimeter, this is unknown, and this angle is unknown. Okay, uh, so let's call this something. Let's call this A using our previous convention. Let's call this B, let's call this C, and let's call this angle whatever you feel like calling it. Okay, let's call it um, a beta. Okay, the, in our previous figure, this was called beta. So let's also call this beta. Okay, so um, you need to find A. For that, you can use the Pythagorean theorem directly. How would you use it? C square equals A square plus b square, right? Uh, I see this video is a little bit out of focus. So let me try to focus it. It's going to go blurry for, for a few seconds. Uh, yeah, I think that's better, right? So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So what is c? 7 centimeters. So 7 centimeter square equals a squared, which is unknown, plus two centimeter square, which is B squared. So A square equals uh, seven 
centimeter square minus two centimeter square, right? Make sense? Which is equal to uh, uh, 49 centimeter square minus four centimeter square, which is equal to 45 centimeter square. Okay, so a squared equals 45 centimeter square. So a is square root of, a would be square root of 45 centimeter. And now here, if you feel like you can use your calculator, uh, I personally don't use a calculator. These days you can uh, just do most of these things using a phone, smartphones have calculators. So this one even has a scientific calculator. Uh, this is standard, any phone. Um, so you you do it however you're supposed to do. I'm just gonna use a calculator. So um, you go. So square root of 45 is square root of 45. That's 6.7. So the answer is 6.7 centimeter. Okay, never forget the unit. How about this angle, beta? All right, the same question. So for this beta, you can use the uh, trigonometric ratios. So if you remember, there are three ratios, right? Sine, cosine, and tan. So you got to think about which one of those three could you use? There are three sides, and now you know all three of them, right? Seven centimeter, two centimeter, and you know this is 6.7 centimeter. You just found it. So you could find any of the three ratios here, right? It doesn't matter. It should give you the same answer. So let's try to pick one ratio and use that. Uh, let's say for beta, um, what do you want to pick? Uh, let's say cosine, okay? So cosine of this angle beta is... Uh, cosine is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, right? Which is what? Adjacent of this beta is this, which is two centimeter, right? Or B. So this is B divided by hypotenuse is C, which is uh, two centimeter divided by seven centimeter. So what is this here? You can also use a calculator. Two divided by seven is 0 0.285 or 0 0.28, 0 0.28. Okay, well, that's good. You found, uh, you, you found cosine of beta, but how do you find beta? You're supposed to find this angle beta. How do you find that? So this is something we didn't talk about before, but there is this, you can use calc your calculator, scientific calculator to do inverse function. So in this case, for example, I don't know how your calculator works, but here it's pretty straightforward. Instead of cosine, you find this something called cosine and there's a little negative one sign on top of that. That means it's the inverse function. So it says cos cosine and it types is that a, a, a Cos, cosine, which is arc cos, which is the same as inverse of cosine. Um, I don't ask me why it's that way. So uh, cosine inverse of 0 0.28. Um, that is 73.7. So that means the angle beta is, uh, beta is cosine inverse, it's written this way, of 0.28, which is which is 73.7 degree. Remember to write degree here because we're using the um, we're using the uh, degree as our unit of angle, okay, as opposed to radian. And make sure your calculator. You understand whether your calculator is set for degree or for radian. 
you know you you could use either one or depending on the problem you have to pick one or the other but you have to be aware of whether it's using degree or uh, or uh, radian for example in this case you see there's a little button called radian so if i tap on that this uh, this 73 instead of 73.7 degree it became 1.28 okay so it's uh, the it's in radian it's 1.28 radian but i put the degree back i get 73.7 degree all right so there's the answer um how about the next one so the next two are very similar uh, very similar in this case there's hypotenuse and one side given and you need to find two two of these this side and this angle and in this case the hypotenuse is not given but with Pythagorean theorem, you know how to deal with that as well. So these two, I'm going to go through them quickly, okay, just for the interest of time. But uh, it's here, so you you can watch it, of course. But I'm not going to uh, elaborate every single step. So again, same thing. I'll draw. And I always like to draw. Uh, just so I understand what I'm doing okay I don't like to keep things kind of in my imagination so let's call this a let's call this B which is the unknown and let's call this C and let's call this angle again beta so same thing C square equals a square plus B square Pythagorean theorem so uh, B is the unknown here right so b square is c square minus a square which is five centimeter square minus uh, four centimeters square which is equal to 25 centimeters square minus 16 centimeters square which is very conveniently nine centimeters square so b is square root of nine centimeter which is of course three centimeter um, so this uh, three four five triangle it's called right where oh, sorry where one side is three the other side is four and the hypotenuse is five or they're in this ratio so the three that the unit could be anything right this could be um say for example uh 9 12 15 right they're in the ratio 3 4 5 that'll also find that'll also get you the same kind of triangle okay so okay so you got this as three um let's move along so you can use cos how about let's use sine this time so sine of uh, beta equals uh, up opposite right opposite divided by hypotenuse and what is the opposite of beta it's this a so a divided by hypotenuse is c that's uh, four centimeter divided by five centimeter what is four divided by five it's 0 0.8 okay so mm, so that means beta is sine the inverse function of 0.8 which is sine inverse as and it says a, a sine arc sine of 0.8 is 53.1 okay so 53.1 degree degree uh, you'll notice that I, I don't uh, I, I never forget the units even here I wrote four centimeter five centimeter here degree it's very important to not forget the units um, first of all it's it's not correct if you forgot the units and second of all it will get you in trouble at some point right at some point you'll mix units right you'll mix centimeter with in inches or something like that and you'll get a wrong answer so never forget units uh, the third one is very simple uh, sorry very similar uh, and you could call it simple as well and uh, you have to find two angles but you know that they add up to 90 degrees so as long as you can find one the other one is known as well so 
So let's also do this quickly in the interest of time. And then this is unknown. And then we can do the same thing. Call this A, call this B, call this C. This is just my way of writing things, right? You can do it slightly differently as long as you follow the follow the logic and follow the mathematics behind it. So this let's call this alpha this time, and let's call this beta. So same thing, right? Say c squared, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and this time c squared is the unknown. So that's uh, five centimeter square plus three centimeter square. equals 25 centimeters square plus 9 centimeters square equals 25 plus 9 is 34 centimeters square. So C is square root of 34 centimeter Square root, sorry, square root of 34 should be a little bit, so sorry, 34 is 5.8, you got it, 5.8, so that's 5.8 centimeters. And what are these two angles? Um, uh, what do you want to use? Sine, cosine, or let's use uh, tan, right? Because these three and five are integers, right? Where this is the decimal um, number, so it's it's a little bit easier to deal with. So let's say tan of alpha is, and we use cosine and sine in previous problems. We use tan here. Tan is opposite divided by adjacent equal to what is the opposite of alpha, this B, and adjacent is A. So three centimeter divided by five centimeter equals three divided by five is 0 0.6. Therefore, alpha must be tan inverse of 0 0.6. So here you see the tan function, then I go here and I see the tan inverse function. So tan inverse of 0 0.6 is 30.9 or yeah, 30, 30 30.9. So that's alpha is 30.9 degree. Now you don't need another trigonometric ratio for to find beta. Okay, beta is just 90 degree minus alpha. And alpha is 30.9. So uh, what is fifty nine point one? Okay, hopefully, all of you got this. All right, let's move on to the next problem. So, okay, so the next uh, problem is number four. Uh, by the way, we got five total and each one has a few sub problems. Uh, it says, find the lengths of these dotted lines and there are these weird angles given and we gotta figure out how to deal with them. All right, so this could look a little bit scary, but let's walk through it, okay? Quite often it's not as scary as it looks. So uh, what do you have here? You have the two axes, right? This X axis and Y axis, right? They're 90 degree, hopefully with each other. 
uh, they should be at 90 degrees. And then uh, th this uh, this solid line, which is this, this segment is four centimeter long and it's at an angle 45 degree uh, from the x-axis. And the dotted line is at 30 degree and this forms a right angle here. And you need to know the length of the dotted line. So this dotted line, what is the length? So it looks kind of complicated, but if you look closely, there is a right angle here, right, 90 degree. So that means this is a right angle triangle. So now you should be thinking, ah, oh, okay. The right angle triangle, well, this is four centimeter, the hypotenuse. So, is there a way for me to find this length? And oh, by the way, some angles are given. Okay, this angle is given, this angle. But only if I knew what this angle is, I could use cosine, right? Because cosine is adjacent divided by uh, hypotenuse. So if I knew cosine of this angle, then I could find this length. But how do I know this angle? Oh, wait a minute. This is 30 degree and this is 45 degree. So this angle must be the difference between 45 and 30. All right, am I making sense? Uh, let me write it on a, on a separate piece of paper, okay? Uh, I'll draw a sketch again. This is what it is. Uh, this is four, four centimeters. And only if you knew what this angle was, because this is already known 90 degrees. So uh, this is the, the side you need to find. So let's call this A, this call, let's call this B, and this is C. And you know that this angle is 30 degree. And this large angle is 45 degree. So this little angle here must be the difference between this large angle and this one. So this angle, which is it's kind of going to be difficult to write it here, but I'll make an attempt. So this alpha, let's call this, is this angle is going to be, what is alpha then? Alpha must be equal to 45 degree minus 30 degree, which is 15 degree. Once you know that, you'll realize that it's actually quite simple now. So in this uh, triangle, what is cosine of alpha? Cosine of alpha is adjacent divided by what? Hypotenuse, right? What is the adjacent? This A. A divided by C. But A is unknown, right? You don't know what A is. You don't know what B is either, but it doesn't. B doesn't seem to bother us. It's out of our path. So, A divided by C is the cosine of alpha. A is unknown. Okay. So, what does this mean? This means that A equals C times cosine of alpha. Right, because cosine of alpha equals a divided by c, so you multiply both sides by c, you get a here and c times cosine of alpha here. Right, hopefully this makes sense to you. Um, okay, a equals c times, so what is that then? So what is c? Oh, I know c, it's four centimeter. It's given right here, c is four centimeter. What is cosine of alpha? It's cosine of 15 degree which is what? Four centimeter times, what is cosine of 15 degree? Uh, here I don't need inverse cosine, I need actual cosine, so I need cosine. Cosine of 15 degree is 0 
nine six five or let's say nine six zero point nine six times four centimeters so that's uh times oops zero point nine six times four centimeter is three point eight four so a must be this dotted line must be three point eight four what is the unit of the unit centimeter good all right what's the next one you know the next two are very similar in the sense that you just have to um, put it in a standard right angle triangle format okay this one is actually is a bit simpler than this this is a right angle triangle one side is two centimeter this is 45 degree this is 90 degree Oh, sorry, this is 90 degrees. So I think this is, uh, you know, this requires some thinking as well, but it's very similar to this problem. So let's do it here. This is B. Always draw. As, as long as it's something that's drawable, go, please draw it. Uh, here I'll use a different color because uh, otherwise you won't be able to see it. Okay, this is the triangle. This is the given triangle. And this is the right angle. Okay, so two centimeter, this side is two centimeter. This side, you don't know. And this angle is 45 is given. So what do you need to know to get this side? And let's call it something. Okay, let's call this uh, A. This unknown is, let's call this uh, C. This unknown is C. So to, what, what, what will help at this point? Maybe knowing one of these two angles will help because then you could use either sine or cosine to find this. How about this angle? How about this angle? Let's call this angle alpha. If this was alpha, then you know that alpha plus this 45 degree is what? Alpha plus 45 degree is this right angle, right? X and Y axis make right angle with each other. So alpha plus 45 degree equals 90 degree because this is the right angle, this one. So therefore, alpha must be 90 degree minus 45 degree which is what, 45 degree, right? It's half of 90. So this alpha is 90 degree. Oh, wait, then how about, what, what, which ratio would be useful now? I, I have this, I need to find the hypotenuse of this triangle, right? This is the hypotenuse, right? And this is the, this is one of the sides, the two sides. And for this angle alpha, this is the adjacent. And this is the hypotenuse. So which which ratio uses adjacent and hypotenuse? It's cosine. Right? Cosine of alpha is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So adjacent is this um, A, hypotenuse is the C in this figure. Um, and C is the one that's not known, right? So th then C that means C equals A divided by cosine of alpha, right? You you do a little switch, right? With like, you know, um, X equals Y divided by Z. That means Y equals, um, sorry, Z equals y divided by x right you you switch these x and y okay so 
you get C equals A divided by cosine of alpha. Oh, now you know everything, right? A is two centimeter divided by cosine of 45 degree. Alpha is 45 degree. So uh, what is what is cosine of 45 degree? Uh, cosine of 45 degree is 0 0.707, 707. So it's two centimeter divided by 0 0.707, which is two divided by 0 0.707 is 2.82, 2.828, whatever. So 2.82 centimeter. But by the way, I've seen some, I've seen problems that you'll see some problems where the unit centimeter is not given. It's assumed that you'll have like some, is, some kind of unit is there, but it's not explicitly mentioned. In that case, just use it the way it is, right? If the two, if the centimeter was not given here, you would just call it two and move on with it. Okay. Um, all right. How about the next one? Well, it's, it's next one is if you, if you do the first and the second and the third one is you should be able to do it. Okay. Because all it says is, okay, I have. This four centimeters is given, and it's at a 30 degree angle to x axis upwards. And then this dotted is 30 degree angles downwards. Uh, but, but, and this is the right angle. So, what is this and what is that? All right, let's do some thinking. Again, always draw, even if it's given, draw, draw it as, as much as possible, draw it yourself. So this is four centimeter and this is at a same angle. So this is 30 upwards, 30 degree. This is 30 degree downwards. And it says this, I'm gonna make it a little bit longer and then you know, this is, um, we'll make it a little bit even longer. Okay. This is a 90 degree angle. So what is this and what's that? All right, let's, so this is the right angle triangle, right? Everybody agrees. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll mark the right angle triangle here. This is the right angle triangle. So just to, to draw it again, just for visual reference, your angle now looks like the, your triangle looks like that. And this is the right angle triangle, okay? And what is known now? You know this, you don't know this, you don't know that. What else do you know? You know this angle, let's call this alpha. Let's call this A, let's call this B, let's call this C. You know alpha. Alpha is this angle is this 30 plus this 30, which is what? 60 degree. Um, and in this case, you know this alpha. Well, what will help you connect this and that? This is the hypotenuse, right? This four centimeters is the hypotenuse. This is what, with respect to this angle, this is the opposite of this angle, right? So what, which ratio connects opposite and hypotenuse? It's the sine. So sine alpha is opposite divided by hypotenuse, which is B divided by C. My apologies for this little squiggle here when I try to write equal to uh, the paper lifts and it almost looks like not equal to, but hopefully you can figure that out. Um, so this is uh, the sine of alpha is B divided by C um, and B is the unknown. So B equals C 
multiplied by sine of alpha. Right? You, you take the C to this side. So, or you can call it multiply both sides by C. So then C is four centimeter, four centimeter multiplied by sine of a 60, alpha is 60 degree. So let's do that. What is alpha sine of 60 degree? Sine of 60 degree is 0.886. So this is four centimeter times 0.866, sorry, uh, multiplied by four centimeter. I can just do it in this thing. Four. So that's 3.4, 3 3 six centimeters. Three point four six centimeters. That's B. Well, what about A? Well, we use sine here. We we could have used cosine to find A, right? We could have done that as well. So I'm gonna do it here. Um, cosine of alpha. Well, at this point, you can use sine or cosine or uh, or, or you can use the Pythagorean theorem. Either way, it's fine. Uh, let's just use cosine here. So cosine of alpha equals adjacent divided by hypotenuse, which is A divided by C, which is, uh, well, no, not which is. Uh, so you multiply both sides by C and you get A equals C multiplied by cosine of alpha which is uh, C is four centimeter again, multiplied by cosine of 60 degree. So just use the same logic again. Cosine of 60 degree, cosine of 60 is 0.5, right? Very easy to remember. So I don't even have to use any calculator here. Four centimeter times 0 0.5 is two centimeters. So the shorter side is two centimeters, longer side is 3.4. Okay, so that was problem number four. Let's move on to problem number four. Problem number five, I have a few trigonometric ratios and uh, just based on the definition, this is, if you followed the, the problem solving so far, I think you should be able to do these, but let's let's do them anyway. And uh, before we, we, we start, let's do a little quick review um, of, of a couple of things. I mean, they were there before I raised this anyway, but I'll just 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 write it down. So, sine uh, sine theta divided by cosine theta equals tan theta, and um, what else? Yeah, I feel like that's the only thing you need to remember for these problems. So. Okay, um, all right, let's get started. What did the first one say? It says three of three times sine theta equals two times cosine theta. If that's given to you, what is tan theta? All right, how do you solve this? Well, you do some thinking, right? What is tan theta? If you remember tan theta, I just told you a minute ago, sine theta divided by cosine theta. But can you get that from this somehow? Yeah, you can, sure you can. Uh, I'll, I'll write this again, okay? So three times sine theta equals two times cosine theta. So what if you divide both sides by cosine theta? 
Um, so I divide this by cosine theta. I divide this by cosine theta. And then um, this side is cosine. Cosine, right? It divided this because you get one. And sine divided by cosine is ten. So that's how you get ten. Then you can you can write it as three tan theta equals two. But you need to find the value of tan theta. So so now you can divide both sides by three which gives you tan theta and so that. Tan theta is two divided by three. That's the answer. You, if you practice these, you'll realize that you don't need to go through every step of these during your thinking process. You can see this and immediately realize that, well, I need tan theta, which is the ratio of sine and cosine, and I can get that simply by moving this cosine to the denominator and then moving this three to the denominator on the other side. This is exactly what we did. But if you, with some practice, you'll start seeing these things quickly. So that's why practicing is extremely important. Okay, just watching what I'm doing here, won't be sufficient. Do this yourself. Do some more problems yourself. Or if your teacher gives you, you have a textbook, whatever. So solve some of those on a regular basis. Once you start doing that, you know, things won't look so complicated once you're used to it. And you'll be amazed just practicing things, how easy they start looking if you practice them. So, okay, next one. Um, sine theta equals half of tan theta. What is cosine theta? I'll write it here again. So, sine theta equals uh, half of tan theta. Then, what is cosine theta? Here, again, I start, I, I want you to start seeing things, right? Tan theta is sine theta divided by cosine theta. So then now you'll get sine on the left side and a sine on the other side and a remaining cosine in the denominator. So that's how you can find cosine value of cosine theta. So what I'm saying is sine theta equals half of tan theta is sine theta divided by cosine theta. Okay, so now you have sine and sine on both sides, which you can uh, cancel and cosine theta you can move to the other side so you divide both sides by sine theta what, what do you get you get um, this means you get uh, 1 equals half 1 divided by cosine theta because you got rid of you, you divided both sides by this both sides by sine um, and then you move this cosine to the other side in the numerator. So this means cosine theta equals half. Right? Everybody with me? So you did this by moving this new denominator into this numerator. Okay. We good? How about the next one? What's the next one? I haven't even seen it. Cosine theta is 1 over 3 tan theta. What is theta? Okay, let's see. I'll write it again here. Cosine theta equals 1 over 3 tan theta. Then what is theta? Now, here you see that just, uh, you know, if you're given this, then finding theta, you can't really use any inverse function, right? You're using a calculator or something. But if you just had one ratio, one trigonometric ratio, either sine or cosine or tan, then you could use this, uh, your calculator to find the inverse. So how do we get that? So let's use our definition again. Cosine theta equals 
uh, I'm going to separate this a little bit. So 1 over 3 of 1 over tan theta, which is equal to is the same thing, right? I just wrote it slightly differently. Uh, but, but tan theta is sine theta divided by cos theta. So, okay, you say 1 third of 1 divided by sine theta divided in the denominator by cosine theta. And when you do that, this, you know, this denominator in the denominator, this comes up in the numerator. So this becomes now 1 over 3 cosine theta divided by sine theta. Okay, hopefully you, you, you understood what I did. I, I, you know, this is the denominator, denominator in the denominator. So this comes up, this becomes a numerator. Okay, remember algebra? Oh, you do that, then you'd see, oh, wait a minute, there's a cosine here and there's a cosine here. You could cancel those, right? You can divide by cosine theta. So if you do that, so I'll just rewrite it, okay? Just to make it a little bit easier to see again. You say, oh, wait a minute, I can divide both sides by cosine theta, right? That and that. Um, Remember, when I, when I strike these out, that means it becomes like one, right? It doesn't become zero. So uh, it becomes one equals one over three, one divided by sine theta. Oh, cool, now just have one, one ratio left. I can use that one ratio to find the value. So this means, yeah, I have this little arrow here. That means it, it implies that sine theta equals one over three. Now I got sine theta. Well, I need theta. So that's fine. Now I can use my inverse. All right. I'll use my inverse. Here now I need to go to the uh, sine. I, I cannot use sine theta. I need to use sine inverse because uh, sine theta is, is 1 over 3. That means that theta is the inverse function of sine 1 over 3. So using that inverse, uh, let me inverse function of sine of 1 over 3 is, uh, I could, I could just write it as 0 0.333. Um, that's 19.46. So we are in degree. That means this is 19.4 degree. Okay. All right. That is all I have uh, for this problem solving session. Hopefully, you followed what I did. I said this earlier. Please, please, please do it yourself don't just watch the video get a paper pencil whatever calculator do it yourself then do some more yourself practice a little bit it won't look as scary and when you're learning physics now remember all this we're we're doing all this so that we can learn physics why are, why does it help because there are vectors and we're going to do vectors next uh, in my next series i'll do vectors theory and vectors problem solving Trigonometry will become useful in vectors. In fact, it's useful in STEM areas, engineering. It appears everywhere. So it's totally worth spending some time learning this. Okay, uh, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.